Hello students, I'm Imani Sharma, your UGC NET educator. In this new YouTube video, we are going to move forward with paper 1 which is teaching and research aptitude of UGC NET and we are going to start with a new topic which is government schemes which are related to higher education. But before we directly jump into whatever we are supposed to do in this very particular video, I have an important announcement to make that we are going to start from 10th of July with the course on paper 1 teaching and research aptitude right which is particularly available on the Drishti learning application apart from that we are also going to you know move forward we are going to start with the 10th from the 10th of July with the courses on paper 2 specifically for English literature and for you know political science as well. So you can for more information click on the link which is provided in the description below and of course we are targeting the December batch. So this was something which I all you know we, I wanted you all to know in this particular video. Correct. So now coming back to the content of today's lecture government schemes for higher education in India. Whenever we talk about higher education we know that even if there are research papers, even if there are teacher trainings etc, even if there are adult education so on and so forth, primary education for that matter, there are certain schemes which are released by the government of India which you all should be knowing from the examination perspective as well as just to have a little bit of awareness as in if I want to get enrolled in any kind of scheme what benefits do I get out of it right. So not just because or for the net perspective but just because of your general awareness and sense you all should be knowing down these particular thing, you know schemes which are there. Now first scheme that we are going to talk about is Nishtha. Now the approach of writing these particular schemes should be if that is a centrally sponsored scheme that the center is going to fund for that. First thing that you all are going to write down is the full form of Nishtha and try to memorize these very names, these very particular things because from the name only you can get an idea that what a scheme is all about. So Nishtha ki full form see you can get that idea. So we are going to read out the full form of Nishtha that is National Initiative for School Heads and Teachers Holistic Advancement which means that it is basically for teachers as well. Moving forward it is launched under the Samagra Shiksha program and 42 lakh teachers will be trained. So this is a teacher centered or teacher specific scheme which is there and the teachers can get enrolled in here to get the particular kind of training in any kind of course. It aims to motivate and equip teachers to encourage and foster critical thinking in students as in the students if coming in a class of a teacher they should not be learning things, mugging up things in a rote manner but they all should be applying their critical you know, skills as well. If I ask you any question that tell me that is stealing a good thing or if I give you an example that if Ramesh stole these many particular you know let's just say this much amount, this much amount of money from her father, from his father's pocket then of course you as a student will try to critically analyze. So the teachers are going to get trained to make you all you know uh, that much capable of thinking critically because in today's time critical thinking is also required along with your academic scores. Handle diverse situations act as first level, uh, level counselor so that the, when a student does not feel safe he or she is having any kind of issue, they can openly approach you basically. Benefit all the heads of schools, hence school heads and teachers holistic advancement, right? Elementary level and all government schools, faculty members of state councils of educational research and training, that is SCERTs ke faculty members, district institutions ke members, right, DIETS, block resource coordinators, cluster resource coordinators, in all states and UTs that is union territories. So this scheme is launched particularly as I told you teacher centric. So you can write the full form launched right centrally sponsored launched for teachers particularly the main focus is that. Then we have Rashtriya Avishkar Abhiyan. 
which means that it is going to talk about innovation. Avishkar kya hota hai? Innovation, right? So, it is sponsored or mentored by IITs, IIMs, IISERs or central universities and reputed organizations. They are going to be the ones who are going to mentor students for this very particular scheme or under this very particular scheme. The age group will be 6 to 18 years of classes 1 to 12 in government schools, KVs, Kendriya Vidyalayas, special schools and special training centers etc. And what kind of habit we are going to inculcate in particularly the students, right? We are going to inculcate their potential for science, maths and tech learning in non. So, this is important with regards to this very particular scheme. That in a non-classroom setting, you are going to learn, you are going to develop that very particular curiosity when it comes to science, maths, tech, because these are certain subjects which students usually fare. They, because they are not taught it in a particular manner, they are not taught these very things, these very three subjects which are there to make or level up that curiosity that they have inside their own selves, correct? So, teaching them in non-classroom settings with certain practical things to make them feel that yes, with science I can also do this, with mathematics I can solve this particular question or equation this easily, correct? Courages and nurtures schools to be incubators of innovation. As I already told you, Avishkar is innovation through innovative programs student exchanges etc. So, students from KVs might go to government schools so on and so forth. Student exchange programs will be there to develop a natural passion for learning science and maths. Correct? So, this is one thing which has been there for the Rashtriya Avishkar Abhiyan which is taught, which is there under which the students will be taught. So, of course, this thing you all should be noting down because that could be asked in the net examination per se. Then we have Swayam Prabha, correct? It is a group of 34 DTH channels. Before that, it was a group of 32 DTH channels, correct? So, students tend to get confused. But now, as you all have this very particular information in front of you, you all will be answering this question in the right manner, right? 24-7 basis pay, this channel works. Every day there will be new content for at least 4 hours and that content will be repeated. This question has also been asked in the net examination that what satellite does Swayam Prabha use? So, it uses GSAT 15 satellite, right? And channels are uplinked from Baisag, Gandhi Nagar. What contents are provided to you? You are provided with the contents by Neptil. IITs, UGC, CEC, IGNU, NCRT, etc. So, they are targeting not just the students from the primary level, secondary level, etc. But they are also targeting, they are also providing education to students who are belonging from higher educational sphere. Hence, this scheme is also, this particular, you know, scheme which is launched by the government is also important for you all to know. Next, we have Equip. Recently, ye poochha gaya tha, pishle ek do saal pe. Full form education quality upgradation and inclusion program. So, it is going to upgrade the quality of education and will, you know, provide the inclusive environment where the students feel that yes, they belong somewhere. It is aiming at ushering transformation in India's higher education system by implementing strategic interventions where improvisation is required in the sector teaching sector for five years. So, this is the cycle that they are targeting for the scheme titled Equip. To double the GER in higher education and resolve the geographically and socially skewed access. What do I mean by geographically and socially skewed access to higher education institutions in India? Let's just assume that you, one student is there who's, who belongs from a village and then there's the other student who belongs from a particular area, let's just say a city. The student in the city has more access to resources, the colleges, the schools which are better as compared to the student in the rural areas. So, geographically as well and socially skewed as in there are groups, right, which are there in India, the SCs, STs, transgenders and of course there are certain special schools as well for students who are special, correct? So, 
socially bhi skewed hai cheeze jinko we are going to maintain them we are going to provide them with the parity with the same things which one student is getting the other will also get that to upgrade the quality of education to global standards and position at least 50 indian institutions among the top 1000 global university this is again also a target of equip correct so you can pause your screens to write these pointers down but my approach of you know having you all to write these particular things is writing them in the pointer format and just writing the main things and not the entire lines per se then we have nad national academic depository correct is born out of an initiative to provide an online storehouse because it is a depository so here you are going to store your documents all your academic you know awards 24 7 just like swayam prabha it also works online storehouse it is for academic awards like we have certificates diplomas degrees you can upload them there right right duly digitized and launched by academic institutions they can also provide you with the same not only ensures easy access to the documents that you have uploaded there the documents the organization has uploaded there and retrieval of an academic award but also validates and guarantees its authenticity and safe storage if you safely store it in nad by registering yourself it will be safe there and of course, let's just say that you have your net certificate and the net certificate in today's time, it comes in the form of a soft copy. So, of course, the soft copy is, you know, that much important and that much authentic, right? It holds the same value as the hard copy will. So, of course, it is important that is validated there with where NAD platform. It comprises of two interoperable digital depositories which are factual information to be noted down cdsl ventures limited so this is one body correct then we have nsdl database management limited this is the second body right which both of them are interoperable these digital depositories have ensured hardware software network facilities for the prescribed quality for the smooth functioning of nad so any kind of hardware software which is required these two bodies are going to deal with it so that the portal works smoothly then we have e yantra this has been asked in the net examination where they ask the question like which scheme in higher education particularly deals with robotics right or to inculcate the habit of you know robotic experimentation in students it is e yantra right embedded systems and robotics by iit bombay so first of all e yantra focuses on robotics the inculcation to uh, you know make students aware and curious about robotics and get them involved in this particular experimentation iit bombay is the launching valley thing sponsored by mhrd or moe and the national mission on education through ict nme ict so there are three bodies which are there nme ict correct the other body is moe ministry of education and the third one is iit bombay three of them are dealing here but iit bombay is mentoring the students as in how to go about with the robotics right the robotic experimentation if they are you know leading into or onto something then we have e culp e culp is basically for design just like e yantra is for robotics this very particular scheme is launched to have or create a digital learning environment for design also called e culp sponsored by again moe government of india as a part of so again moe and meict right these two are the bodies which are there which are working to have students or provide them with the access or create an environment where they can also learn anything and everything about design so here the design we can talk about is fashion designing architecture any kind of designing which comes under the paradigm the main term of design that is being launched under this very particular scheme titled ecal then we have gyan global initiative of academic networks 
Higher education aimed at tapping the talent pool of scientists. So, scientists and entrepreneurs internationally to encourage their engagement with the institutions of higher education in India. And this line, ditto, has been asked in the net examination. Right? So, this portal is responsible for the collaboration right of the people who are scientists and entrepreneurs internationally to augment the country's existing academic resources to you know bring forward certain changes if there are any to accelerate the pace of quality reform the reforms in the field of education can be made through this very scheme to elevate india's scientific and technological capacity to global excellence because we are asking the entrepreneurs etc scientists as well to collaborate with the other people internationally so that we are aware of the global standard, correct? Then we have imprint, important scheme, impacting research, innovation and technology. It is the first of its kind of MOE. Here again, MHRD was renamed to MOE after NEP 2020. Supported Pan IIT IISE joint initiative. So it is a joint initiative. There is no one body which is dealing with it, but it is of all IITs and IISEs joint initiative to address the major science and engineering challenges which are there, which are in the field of higher education and how India must address and champion to enable, empower and embolden the nation for inclusive growth and self-reliance rather than relying on the, you know, technology of the people from abroad or internationally. So that we only can develop scientists, we can only develop the technologists here in India who are working according to the global standard which is set forward. This novel initiative has two-fold mandate. Number one, Developing new engineering education policy because you need to go about with the global standards. You need to know that this is what globally which is there and I need to reach to that very particular level. Creating a roadmap to pursue engineering challenges and then answering or addressing those challenges. It provides the overarching vision that guides research into areas that are predominantly socially relevant. And what kind of areas in which fields in the science and engineering fields. Then we have Swayam. Swayam Prabha, 34 DTA channels, 24-7 by Sa Gandhi Nagar, right? And GSAT 15 satellite. That is Swayam Prabha. Then we have Swayam as well. Which official web website is swayam.gov.in. Instrument for self-actualization. Here also you can get enrolled for courses, right? You can learn certain things, but of course, if you need the degree of this very particular thing, you'll have to pay a nominal fee. Student can choose his or her course from hundreds of available courses that is taught at a university, college or school level. If a learner is studying in any college across the country, the credits earned by taking this very thing, the academic bank of credits that we have talked about, that we have covered in the previous video of NEP 2020, from here also you can earn the credits. These courses will be transferred into their academic record, record which is known as. So you can register yourself at academic bank of credits. Correct? The different courses hosted on Swayam are covered in four quadrants and these four quadrants have been asked, right, time and again. Why have I brought forward the important schemes as well? Because I know this has been the pattern. So, number one is video lectures will be provided in your course if you get enrolled in Swayam. Then, reading material will be provided to you. Self-assessment tests will be provided to you. An online discussion forum where you can discuss certain things which are there related to that particular lecture, course or if you have any ideas, those things can also be talked about in here. Various steps have been taken to enrich the learning experience of the students by utilizing this very thing, audio, video, you know, multimedia functioning as well. Now, we have seven national coordinators under Swaya for different, different courses. NPTEL is for the engineering part and I want you all to jot these seven national coordinators as well as in what signifies what, what is for, which body, which national coordinator is for which kind of subject. For NPTEL is for engineering. 
UGC for non-tech post-grad courses like we have English, we have history, etc. because they are non-technological or technical. CEC for undergrad, that is for bachelors. This is for masters. NCRT and NIOS for school education. Hmm? IGNO for out of the school students. IIMB for management studies and NITTRTRs for teacher training. So, I want you all to jot these seven national coordinators for different, different types of teaching, right? And of course, in different, different types of subjects. Then we have four new SWAM courses have been recently launched few months back. The history of Indian Buddhism, Buddhist philosophy, Abhidhamma, which comes under the Pali, Community engagement and social responsibility. So, they can ask you for the odd one out, etc. So, you need, my students need to know that if there has been any kind of update when it comes to Swayam or any other MOOC platform. Correct? Then we have Ladli Lakshmi Yojana. Ladli Lakshmi Yojana was launched in the year 2007 in Madhya Pradesh and as the name suggests, it is about girls. Correct? To change the negative approach of society which they have towards the girl child and promote as in yes they do need education as well. To improve the sex ratio, education as well as health status of the girl child or girl children. After all the over successful of the scheme in MP 2007, this scheme was taken up by other areas as well, by other cities as well. Right? And what are those? UP may be a scheme chal rahi hai, Delhi, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Goa and Jharkhand. Because after the successful, you know, usage of this very particular scheme, the, you know, consequences which came after that, these other areas also took up the initiative to launch this particular and move forward with this particular scheme. All the girls which are registered will be advantaged with educational expenses. Of course, the government will be taking care of the expenses of the girl child. However, who drop out from schools, unka vai pe khatam ho jayega. they will not be able to get the benefits from this very particular scheme. So, if you are enrolled in this very particular scheme, you are supposed to get in there, get your education, so on and so forth. And it also, the government also provides 1 lakh to the applicant's family to get the girl married. When the time of the marriage comes, right, government provides 1 lakh for the same. But if a girl is married before the age of 18, they will not be getting this particular amount and they will not be benefiting. Now the questions that I have for you, name the scheme which facilitates academic and research collaboration between Indian institutions and the best institutions in the world. The answer to this question is option C. Spark. What is the full form? We are going to write that very particular thing because that has not been covered as a scheme in here. Scheme for promotion of academic and research collaboration. So, even if you read the question in here, which facilitates academic and research collaboration, right? Scheme for academic and research collaboration, correct? It aims at improving the research ecosystem as the name suggests ki academic or research collaboration karni hai. So, of course, we are going to take heed of this very particular thing to increase this very, you know, curiosity amongst the people to improve the research ecosystem in India because it is not that particularly good, right? Facilitating academic and research collaboration between Indian institutions which are there and the foreign institutions of the world. So, the collaboration takes place from 28 selected nations. So, these 28 selected nations are going to collaborate with us Indians, our institutions and how and that is why the academic through this very academic and research collaboration, the entire research ecosystem will be benefited. Correct? Under this scheme, 600 joint research proposals will be awarded for two years to facilitate strong research collaboration. So, we got that very particular poem. Uh, point, sorry. A set of five thrust areas are there. What are those areas? Fundamental research, emergent areas of impact, convergence, 
action oriented research and innovation driven so these are the main areas in which you should be conducting your research under the spark scheme correct so this is what we had to cover in this particular lecture when it comes to paper one and government schemes which are related to higher education field the portals etc which are associated with certain things or others and i've tried to cover most of them which are important from the net perspective right till then we meet again you all keep on studying thank you so much and have a good day